good evening everybody i am aditya i'll be giving a presentation for our uh, project open plc that was done under the integrated development lab so the main objective of our uh, project uh, was to was to develop an industrial compatible open source plc using open source technologies such as uh, so that it's simple uh, cost effective helpful for students and easy to program conventional plcs are costly and they're not really open source so uh, if students wants uh, if, if anyone wants to uh, get a feel of how to work with it uh, they won't be able to so uh, this plc is basically developed with the aim uh, in order to help students uh, get a feel of our uh, project so uh, we this is the second iteration of our uh, plc the first iteration uh, was done uh, previously before us. So here we've made uh, a lot of changes on our uh, second iteration. So these are the improvements that we've done in our second iteration. Uh, so these are some of the improvements that we've made in our uh, second iteration. So we've uh, included Forte Runtime Environment, which is an open source uh, uh, app application deployment uh, uh, software. We've also made a transition from ladder programming to functional block diagrams. We've migrated from IEC 61131 standards to IEC uh, 61499 standards. And since uh, we've, we've replaced Atmega 16A microcontroller with, with the Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, now, now that we have a Raspberry Pi Zero, we have the luxury of operating with it remotely. So we've also uh, incorporated headless mode of operation. Uh, our project uh, um, has three major parts, which are the hardware development, uh, firmware and Linux development, and application development. Uh, I'll speak in uh, brief about all these parts. Uh, the hardware, the hardware part, basically involves uh, creating uh, PCB designs for our project. All of these was done from scratch, and we tested it using breadboards, and then we migrated it to. Uh, PCB boards using KiCad. So these are some of the pictures of our PLC. Uh, this is the base board of our PLC, uh, in which you can see the inputs and output terminals. Uh, this is the top board with the base board. Uh, and while designing the PLC, we also took into consideration the form factor of the PLC. You can see that it's uh, uh, extremely compact, and it could be fit under this box. Now, coming to the firmware and Linux development, uh, the main objective of this part was to make sure that there is seamless inter interfacing of devices with the PLC and uh, uh, the communication between them was smooth. So these are some of the work that was done. Uh, moving on to the application development, uh, here the main task was to uh, convert existing ladder, ladder programs in uh, into functional block diagrams. We've also made a learning curve for students who wish to uh, convert to uh, uh, functional block diagrams. So learning curve for students for using event and FBRT blocks. Event and FBRT blocks are some blocks present in the Fordiac environment, which is an open source software. Uh, and we've also implemented MQTT protocol. So now we'll have a, uh, a demo of, uh, of an application that we've developed to give an example of how, how much RPLC can do. Uh, we'll now have the demonstration of a uh, cruise control system. This cruise control system is uh, basically to uh, show uh, what the P our PLC can do. So, yeah. What is a cruise control system? Uh, cruise control system is basically a running car. And uh, whenever you switch on the cruise control system, at whatever speed you are running at, it will maintain the same speed. Uh, the basic mechanism working with it, with it is, whenever you've switched it on, suppose you're at 50 km per hour, it will take it, 50 km per hour is set. Now if the speed increases or decreases by any chance, the pedals will move automatically, there will be an actuator below the pedals, it will move automatically to bring the uh, things down, uh, press, pressing the pedals of accelerator or brake. So that is what we are going to demonstrate. This is the cruise control application that I have already deployed on the uh, PLC. Now I would like to show how this works uh, using a GUI. As you can see, this is the it it 
resembles a dashboard of a car. That is a start-stop button just to start or stop the cruise control. The, it shows the status of the cruise control. It's right now it's off. The present speed it is showing 53 because we had switched it on and uh, we have uh, not uh, switched it off again, so it's showing 53. Anyways, steering wheel position. Okay, we have something known as a, known as a steering wheel here. I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, it's it, it is kind of a joystick. Uh, so if you rotate it, uh, like if you move it uh, after a particular level, uh, I have set it after 4,000. If it goes after 4,000, then it will come out of the cruise control system. Like the start stop will go to the left again, uh, and the cruise control will become off. Next thing, the accelerator and the pedal. Okay, what happens is when I manually press that accelerator or pedal, then also the cruise control, it will come out of the cruise control system. Now let me uh, start it. This one is moving. And the speed is changing, 51, 55, 52. Right now, if I start the cruise control, okay, now the speed is set at 51. When, that 50, uh, when the speed increases above 51, the brake and accelerator pedal becomes like this. Okay, please. Now I have increased the speed till 70, 65, but my se uh, set speed is 51. So my brake pedal has been pressed to decrease the speed of the system. But we, because we have not put any actuators here to s actually decrease the speed, that's why the speed is not decreasing. That can be done only when we, we use our actual car to uh, show this. Okay, now we are decreasing the speed up to 29. 27, 28, but the speed is set at 51. So the accelerator pedal has been pressed. Okay, and then what we do is, um, uh, this is the steering wheel, let me just move it a little bit. See, this is increasing or decreasing. Okay, now what he, what he did was, he entirely pressed it, that's why it went out of the cruise control system as you can see. We didn't do anything, it automatically went to, uh, went to off. Now I'll switch it on again. Okay, now again my speed is set as 37. Now I will manually press this pedal, accelerator pedal, and as you can see it has again stopped. And now, no matter if I increase or decrease the speed, these pedals won't move because it is no more in the uh, cr cruise control system. So this is just a demonstration of what our PLC can do. This is not our entire project. Our entire project is this PLC board that we have designed, the one we, we have configured, and we have also um, done many applications. We have converted many uh, existing applications that were written in bladder diagram into function blocks. And we are, we are complying with 61499 standards right now. So um, that's it. Uh. So this is a, a slide of our project timeline. So uh, the first two weeks we had, uh, uh, we dedicated it entirely for, uh, to uh, get familiarized with the environments and the softwares that we were going to be using in the next few weeks. And in the next few weeks, from week three to week six, we had distributed our work, and we worked separately. And uh, one of us worked on the hardware uh, implementation, the other worked on the Linux and development part, and while the other one worked on the application development part. In the last two weeks, we uh, basically combined all these, uh, all these different parts of the project to make the uh, final P PLC. Now, moving on to the future scope, yeah, these are some of the future scopes of the project. So right now, the hardware is not compatible with the IEC 61499 standard. So uh, in the future iterations, we could probably uh, improve the hardware such that it is uh, complying with the uh, standard. Uh, and also, uh, here, when we, uh, when we calculated the speed, the speed was actually uh, transferred to the Node-RED pr uh, program uh, using MQTT protocol. Uh, the MQTT protocol that we've used here was not secure, so we could make that secure. And developing SCADA solutions. We don't have any SCADA solutions uh, as of now, so that could be included. And writing more uh, interfaces for more peripherals and sensors. So hope you like the presentation. Thank you.